Hello, I'm Dr. Lim from KB Lim Skin Clinic. This is a short video on acne vulgaris. Acne vulgaris or pimples is an inflammatory disorder of the pilosebaceous unit. The pilosebaceous unit comprises of four structures. The structures highlighted in red are the ones that are involved in acne development, namely the hair follicle or skin pore and the sebaceous gland or the oil gland. Doctors believe that four factors interplay to cause acne. One, hyperkeratinization. Two, excess sebum production. Three, propionibacterium acnes overgrowth. And four, inflammation. One, hyperkeratinization. This refers to the accumulation of dead keratinocytes, also called corneocytes, blocking the opening of the hair follicle or skin pore, leading to the accumulation of dead skin cells, dead keratinocytes, as well as sebum behind the obstruction. This leads initially to the formation of microscopic comedones or microcomedones and later visible comedones such as closed comedones or whiteheads and open comedones or blackheads. 2. Excess sebum production. Androgens are male hormones. They include testosterone, androstenedione and dehydroepiandosterone sulfate or DHEAS. Androgens are present in both males and females, which is why acne can affect both sexes. However, acne tends to be less severe in women because they have lower levels of androgens and they have female hormones or estrogen that help to counter the effect of androgens. Testosterone is converted to its active form, dihydrotestosterone or DHT, by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. DHT binds to receptors in sebaceous glands, stimulating the sebaceous glands to produce more sebum. So this accounts for the excess sebum production. 3. Propionibacterium agnase, also known as putibacterium agnase, or P-agnase for short, proliferates. P-agnase is an unusual bacteria. It is lipophilic and anaerobic. Lipophilic means it is lipid craving, it loves to feed on oil, including sebum. Anaerobic means it grows best in the absence of oxygen, which is unusual. And these conditions prevail when the follicle is blocked. And as P. acnes overgrows and proliferates, its enzymes break sebum down into fatty acids. Fatty acids are irritating when they get into the skin. In addition, overgrowth of P. acnes in the follicles seems to alert the immune system of an impending infection. 4. Inflammation. Inflammation may be due to two processes. One is a foreign body reaction and two is the body's own immune response to P. acne bacteria. Note that the follicle contents are actually still outside the skin as the far as the immune system is concerned. But when the, uh, when the, the debris, the dead cells, dead keratinocytes, keratin, sebum and fatty acids uh, accumulate and distend the follicle, it eventually causes a rupture of the follicular wall. And when this happens, all the product which is foreign to the skin enters the deeper skin called the dermis and produces a foreign body reaction. And this, this appears as inflammation. In addition, the body now has to deal with an infection which is caused by bacteria now entering the skin. And this reaction also causes inflammation. Acne vulgaris usually begins in puberty. It's more common in adolescence and it has a prevalence, a, a incidence of about 85% in people between the ages of 12 to 24. So it's extremely common. However, it's not confined to just young individuals because an increased incidence has been observed in adults, especially in women. 12% of adult women are affected as opposed to 3% of men. Adult acne is defined as acne in someone who's age 25 or more. Adult acne is especially common in women and I've seen, I do see quite a number of adult women with acne and they are very bothered by it because they, they do not consider themselves to be of an age that they should be getting acne. So it's a little bit hard to uh, accept. Acne appears as non-inflamed lesions, which we mentioned earlier, or as inflamed lesions such as papules, pustules, nodules, and cysts. Let's have a look. So this patient has multiple closed comedones or whiteheads on the forehead. This patient has an open comedone 
or blackhead on the cheek, note that the black colour is not due to dirt as some believe, but due to oxidised melanin. This patient has papules, inflamed papules, and this patient has pustules or pus heads. And this patient has a severe form of acne called nodular cystic acne. The nodule is simply a, a solid swelling, whereas the cyst is a fluid-filled swelling. Acne usually affects the face but can occur on the neck, upper back, chest, shoulders and arms. Acne is graded uh, according to the following grades for clinical or routine use in the clinic. As comedonal acne, the mildest form consisting of uh, open comedones or whiteheads and closed comedones and blackheads or as papular pustular acne which is divided into mild, moderate and severe forms. The most severe form is nodular cystic acne which you saw a photograph of earlier on and a variant of that known as acne conglobata. For clinical trials where we are compare the effectiveness of treatment, we will use a more elaborate grading scale such as indicated on the last paragraph. The diagnosis of acne is ma mainly made on clinical examination. In women with irregular menses, irregular periods and signs of muscularization such as male pattern hair loss, facial hair, hirsutism, we may order a blood test as well as ultrasound examination because some of these patients, female, some women, some of these women may have polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS or some other endocrine or hormone abnormality. Complications include psychological as well as physical complications. Psychological complications include reduced quality of life, um, loss of self-esteem, low self-esteem, and even depression. Scars may take the form of ice pick, fox scar, rolling scars as shown in the upper figure, or as protruding scars known as keloids in the lower figure. Treatment of acne involves topical treatments, oral treatments, and miscellaneous treatments. Topical treatments include the use of topical retinoids such as tretinoin, isotretinoin, and adapalene. Topical antibiotics such as erythromycin and clindamycin. Benzoproxide is a common over-the-counter medicine that's often the first stop for patients when they first have acne. It is effective but can sometimes cause mild skin irritation. It is also available combined with antibiotic or a retinoid, and this is a prescription item that can has to be obtained from the doctor. Other treatments include zelic acid, keratolytics that soften the keratin plug, as well as sulfur, a very old but still effective treatment for acne fungi. Oral treatment includes oral antibiotics. Antibiotics work by killing P. agnes bacteria and also they work by reducing the inflammation, anti-inflammatory effects on the inflamed lesions such as papules, nodules and cysts, pustules, nodules and cysts. Examples include erythromycin, tetracycline, minocycline, and doxycycline, but there are many others. The other form of oral treatment is used in severe acne. This may include isotretinoin, also known as loracutane or accutane. This is a very effective drug against acne because it affects all the four causes for acne. However, it can be used in it has to be used free uh, carefully in women because in if pregnant during treatment it may cause malformation in the fetus, in the developing baby. It can be used safely in men. Hormonal therapy can only be used in women because it can cause feminization in males. Drugs used include spironolactone, which is actually an antihypertension drug. It works because it has anti-androgen properties. That means it blocks the androgen. Oral contraceptives are useful in women with acne who also wish for an effective contraceptive against pregnancy. Uh, they work by increasing estrogen, which is the female hormone. If you remember, that helps to counter the effects of male hormones. Sometimes the doctor may prescribe a combination of an estrogen such as ethanol estradiol with an antiandrogen such as cyproterone acetate. Miscellaneous treatments include the use of light and laser treatments the P. agnes bacteria produces a pigment called porphyrins, and porphyrins absorb light in the blue range between 407 and 420 nanometers. Hence, we can use light and laser machines to target the pigment and in the process kill P. agnes bacteria. So this is an instance of light being used to kill bacteria. Other treatments include chemical peels using glycolic acid, jasonous peels, salicylic acid, lactic acid, 
to remove the keratin plaque. Intralesional steroid injections can be given to resolve nodules and cysts, as well as to reduce the size of keloids. Microdermabrasion involves the use of a machine that carries that passes a stream of air, carrying in it crystals that gently abrade the skin and remove the keratin flux. Um, another treatment that can be used is manual extraction of comedones. This using a comedo extractor to individually extract each block follicle, uh, a comedone, either open or closed, can be treated in this manner. There are few, two key points that I wish to make. One is acne is eminently treatable and early treatment is recommended because it prevents scars, both psychological and physical. Although we can treat physical scars better now with modern treatments, um, it is not always 100% effective. In this instance, it is, always used, uh, it is always better to prevent the scars than to treat the scar. And secondly, Acne is recurrent in some patients in the younger age group. So to prevent this, we often advocate maintenance therapy. This involves applying a topical agent regularly. And we suggest that you include that as a step in your skincare routine. This way, you will not forget and it helps to keep your skin clear of acne. So I hope you found this short presentation useful and informative. Please visit our website at www www.kbilinskinclinic.com for more videos and educational information and I would like to thank you for watching and I would hope I hope to see you again goodbye